Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard video and today guys we are going to be talking about some more rumours surrounding the upcoming 9th edition Ashton Militarum Codex. Now this is the second video that I am doing on Imperial Guard rumours and don't worry if you've not seen the first one, I'll link it at the end of this video so that way you'll be able to catch up on all of the rumours surrounding the upcoming Guard Codex. Now I want to make something 110% clear, we are talking about rumours today, we are not talking about leaks. When we talk about leaks, there's some sort of physical evidence to back up, maybe like a codex picture or a model picture, something like that. That's not what we're talking about today. These are rumours. We've got no physical evidence to back these up, so make sure that you're taking it with a big bucket of salt, big pinch of salt. And to be honest, guys, I am sharing this information, but it is entirely up to you to determine how valid you think it is. But I like talking about these kind of rumours because... It's interesting to me to see how many of them will eventually pan out and actually come out in the wash when the codex itself actually drops. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the source. Where am I getting this information from? Am I just making it up or is there actually something to back up what I'm talking about here today? Well, after the last rumours video that I did, several people reached out to me and said, hey, I've got some more rumours for you. I've actually seen a copy of an early playtester version of the codex. Now, when they say playtester version, what they were saying is it's not got all the fluff or all the pictures in it, but it's a stripped down PDF of the new rules that GW wanted people to try out when it came to building the new guard codex. Now, admittedly, the, the people that approached me about this said that it was about four to five months ago that they'd seen these rules. Things may have changed since then, but it's up to you to determine how valid you think that is. Now, I want to be clear. I haven't seen this playtester version of the codex they're talking about, but these are people that are coming to me and saying, I've seen a document. These are some of the rules that GW were playing around with when it came to building the new guard codex. So again, I just want to reiterate that it's up to you to determine how valid you think that source might be and how much faith you want to put in these rumours. But that's just my source. Now let's crack on with the video. But first, ad time. Are you a company commander struggling to keep the morale of your men up in this difficult and trying meta that we find ourselves in? Worried that the Commissar's executions just aren't having the morale boosting effect that they used to have and now he's going to ask you to avoid the red tape well don't panic because thanks to today's sponsor across the realms morale boosting reinforcements are just round the corner the pinup corps are a group of badass guards women who are ready to fight and die for the emperor and they're gonna look damn good whilst doing it in addition to their guard issue equipment each one of these ladies is packing twin demolisher cannons and they know how to use them these finely detailed models come with all manner of special and heavy weapons, as well as walkers and tanks and transports and officers and sergeants. Everything you will need to fight the enemies of the Emperor and win. So what are you waiting for? Check out the links in the description below and turn your guardsmen faces from this to this. Thank you once again to Across the Realm for supporting the channel by sponsoring this video. And now back to the main event. So the first rumor that I want to talk about is that first rank fire, second rank fire is going to change. And it's going to change from what it is currently now, which is rapid fire one becomes rapid fire two for lasguns, which means that at close range, you get two shots with lasguns and at long range, you get four shots with lasguns. It's going to change from that to lasguns become heavy three. Now that is a really big change if true and it will fundamentally affect how the order is going to work. Right now you're encouraged to run up to your opponent and dump as many shots as possible into them and try and overwhelm them with lasgun bolts. And this is going to change it to the fact that you're going to want to stay back because it's going to be more shots at long range. There's less incentive to get up close and personal. And it's also going to change the fact that if you move your lasguns are going to be hitting at minus one because your lasguns will count as heavy. Overall, I don't think I'm a big fan of this change. Uh, personally, rules-wise, I think it's going to encourage players to be more static and games are won and lost in the movement phase. I also think from like a fluff narrative point of view, it kind of goes against what first rank fire, second rank fire is based on. Now, for those that don't know, it's a reference to an old war film called Zulu, where British Redcoats were able to hold off hordes of really brave Zulu warriors by just doing point blank blistering firepower. There's a really famous scene where the officers are calling out first rank fire, second rank fire, third rank fire. 
Now, the second room is apparently Katie and Sergeant are going to have access to a special kind of auto gun, which has got three shots. Now, this is interesting because we've seen pictures of the new Katie and Mozart coming out, albeit they were very grainy and from a distance. But we definitely saw there was some kind of new weapon being held by a couple of those new Katie and Gazman. And people assumed it was shotgun veterans, but what if that new weapon that we were seeing, you know, this grainy pitch that definitely wasn't a last gun, what if it was a Cadian sergeant with this new kind of auto gun? If sergeants are able to get las guns or rifle weapons again, that will be great. Uh, it's kind of interesting if they limit it to just Cadian sergeants. We'll have to see how this pans out for the other factions. But apparently, in one form or another, sergeants will be getting their rifles back. Now, the next rumor is that Hammer of the Emperor is going to stay, but you're going to have to pick between that or a regiment trait. Now, sort of digging down into this a little bit more, this kind of links into what people have been saying, that the main guard overall faction bonus isn't regiment specific. So how it might work is that if you want to take multiple different regiments together, you can take Hammer of the Emperor. If you want to really focus down on one regiment, you'll get a regiment trait and maybe get some extra buffs with that as well. So it's interesting that Hammer of the Emperor is going to stay, but it's not going to be in the same way that we're used to. On top of this, apparently, Death Corps of Krieg, Katachan and Cadians are each going to get a new type of infantry squad, some kind of special veteran squad that you can only get if you take those regiment traits. Apparently, the Katachan one is going to be like the Katachan Devils and be able to take three flamers. The Cadian ones are going to be some sort of like veteran Cadian infantry that allows you to get two special weapons and a sergeant upgrade. And the Death Corps of Krieg one has a plasma gun involved in it. Now, that's kind of interesting. And these are going to be clear. These are going to be in addition to your regular guard infantry. So when we've heard that veterans are going away, maybe they are in one form, but they're coming back in another form. Kind of interesting if that is the case. And that actually plays into another rumor that I've heard from a different source. And this was actually a while ago that there was going to be new Katachan models coming, new Katachan infantry on the way, and maybe even other new Katachan kits as well. So it's interesting how the old rumors that I heard almost a year ago are now starting to play into and become more clear with some of the newer rumors that we're hearing uh, more recently. Moving on, apparently Ogren and Bolgren are going to get a minus one damage buff. Now that would be really good because at the moment you're kind of paying Terminator points for not a Terminator. If you can pay Terminator points and get something that's like a Terminator but also reduces damage by one, that would be really, really strong and definitely plays into the fluff of Ogryn just simply being able to ignore Grievous Wounds. So if that is true, I think that will go a long way to making not only Bulgrin but also Ogryn genuinely viable. Now, so far we've been talking a lot about infantry-based rumours, but now let's take a look at some of the vehicle ones. And apparently, tanks with turrets get the turret weapon special rule. Now, my guy didn't say it specifically was for Lehman Russes. He just said tanks with turrets. So this may apply to things like Hellhounds and Chimeras as well. Apparently, this rule means that you will get plus one to hit with your turret weapons and your turret weapons can shoot out of combat. Now, that's really interesting if that is the case, because it means that if you're if the other supposed rumor about tank commanders being limited to one per detachment becomes true, this is going to go a long way to mitigating that problem. Right now, tank commanders are a big crutch for the guard. And if you limit them to one detachment, it's going to make it really difficult. How? Because that political three plus is just so vital, right? However, if Lehman Russes as a whole are getting access to some kind of Ballistic Skill 3 Plus kind of jobby, then that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, however, obviously, it's only going to apply to the turret weapons, apparently, and you know, all the sponsors or whole weapons, that's going to, it's going to apply to that. However, on the flip side, apparently, grinding advance is gone. No more double shooting Lehman Russes. But on the other flip side, it's just constant gotchas, constant flip sides. On the other flip side again, Battle Cannons and Demolishers are going to get a similar profile to the new Chaos ones. For example, we're looking at D6 plus 3 shots. So you will be fundamentally getting less shots overall, but you will be getting a more reliable number of shots. So it's up to you. I don't know how I feel about that. At the moment, it's quite nice being able to fire twice and re-roll the random number of shots via various regiment traits. But I feel like that's more of a side grade than a downgrade. 
Now, a really exciting rumor is apparently we will be getting a new Macarius type tank model. Now, I don't know if this is going to be separate to the Rogal Dawn slash Praetorian tank, whatever it's going to be, or if it's just this new tank's getting multiple names at the moment. But apparently, we will be getting a new tank type model. It may be different to the Rogal Dawn slash Praetorian that we've heard about already. And apparently it has a weapon that is called the Oblivion Cannon. I have no more information on that. This very much could be a case of that we're only getting one new tank and it's just gone through several different name changes over the course of its history. That's fine. But apparently, you know, more and more evidence is coming out that we will be getting some kind of new tank and it's going to have some interesting and unique weapon systems. At this point, guys, I would... I would err on the side of caution and say that this is probably just the tank that we've already heard about, the Rogal Dawn, all that kind of stuff. But it's interestingly that a couple of people have given it a different name now. So maybe GW heard that people didn't like the name Rogal Dawn and they've sort of been going through different kind of names for this new model. It could be that it's just the one tank. It could be we're getting a couple of new tanks. At this point, I have no more information. I've just heard that apparently we will be definitely getting some kind of new tank or tanks. Now, the last thing that I want to mention is apparently one change that's going to be coming is to the Shadow Sword. And it's going to be getting a flat damage rate in the Shadow Sword. And apparently, uh, this could be insane, apparently it's going to be getting a flat damage of 14 if that's true, that's absolutely insane. <laughs> Is that the most flat damage that any unit can do? I think it might be, guys. Let me know down in the comment section below. But a part of the Shadow Sword is going to be getting a flat damage and it could be as high as 14, which is pretty big if true. But that's all we've got time for today, guys. That's all of the information that I've got for you. If I find anything else out, of course, I will share it. But right now, let me know what you're thinking down in that comment section below. Are you feeling positively or negatively about this potential information? Do you think that this is more of a side grade than an upgrade? Which bits do you like? Which bits do you not like? Let me know down in that comment section. Now, if you've enjoyed today's video, then please consider giving it a like. And if you want to see more stuff like this, then subscribe to the channel. If you really want to see more content like this and support me, please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. It's thanks to my channel members and to my patrons that I'm able to go full time with Mordian Glory content. And that means I've been able to have my ear to the ground a lot more and report on information even earlier than I normally do. So if you like these kind of rumor videos and you want to see more of them, then please consider signing up and becoming a channel member and patron. And I just want to take a moment now to do a shout out to the latest people that have gone the extra mile and decided to support me even further. So I want to say a big thank you to James Burrell, Inquisitor Ra, Jimmy, Waiting for Something Happen, and Alonius Pius for becoming channel members. Thank you guys for doing your part. I also want to say a big thank you to Waiting for Something to Happen, Nick Hooper, Leo King Art, Alex Hines, Kadia 4 and Dominic Griffin for being Patreons. Thank you so much, guys. Your Patreon support is really, really appreciated. Now, last but certainly not least, I want to take a moment to say a special, personal, heartfelt thank you to all of my top tier Patreon supporters. These are the war masters, the people that have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty when it comes to supporting the Morning Glory channel. So a big 07 down in the comment section, guys, for Navy Veteran. Philip French, Ross Miller, Tequal, Alex Dengal, John Stubbs, Nicholas Walsh, Swordfish Trombone, Diesel Fox, Tom Sutton, and of course, August Varney. Thank you so much, guys, for your ongoing support. It really, it really helps keep this channel going. I hope you've all enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.